All right, this is a key to a Tesla Roadster. And this, my friends, this is a Tesla Roadster. This is the original, the car that kind of started it all and one of the most interesting cars on the planet. A lot of you have probably heard the story of how Tesla took a Lotus Elise, an existing gas car, turned it into an electric car, taking a bunch of parts out, putting a bunch of things in, and then selling that and then starting the journey of building and selling electric cars to people that were actually kind of cool instead of just the sort of boring ones that came before it. And this this original is super interesting. I've actually gotten a chance to live with it for a while and I have a lot to say. This is not a new car, so I've never reviewed a car from 2008 before. So this is less of a review and just more of some of the fascinating things that I found about living with this car now that to me prove it's ahead of its time. I haven't driven other cars from this time, but I'm very convinced it was ahead of its time. And there's a lot of things that I'll show you about that. But first, some quirks and features and just interesting facts about it. So first things first, uh, this car is tiny. I don't know how to make it any more obvious, maybe by this angle of just me standing normally over it, but it looks like a toy car. Like this is the, the lowest car I've ever driven. And if you've ever seen a Lotus Elise, you'll, you'll know that the shape is very familiar. But the fact is this car shares less than 10% of its actual parts with that Lotus that it is based on. So it's the same size, roughly the same dimensions. Uh, and I think it shares a windshield and some other suspension parts and things like that. But generally after that, it's a bunch of Tesla parts. So you're gonna see a bunch of Tesla stuff, Tesla logos, Tesla seats that we'll get to, uh, the radiator, the logo. It is a Tesla car, but it does look like a Lotus Elise from a distance if you've seen one of those too. Now, maybe the most impressive part of it is that there are still 2008 Roadsters out on the roads today that are still people's daily drivers. And I was actually able to borrow this and use it for a couple days thanks to one of you who emailed me. So shout out to Justin. And he's daily this car. It's got 97,000 miles on it and still works like normal. I'll show why it's a little tough to live with in a second, but that's, that's the reality of some of these cars, which is super cool. Uh, so now, why is that ahead of its time? Well, first of all, a car this small was already, it had to be using basically every inch of its space from the engine to the transmission and all the components that have to go inside. So for the Tesla to come along in 2008, you know, 14, 15 years ago, and to put together a fully functioning electric car that works really well, and that's convincing and interesting to people, more so than other electric cars had ever been up to that point, is already really impressive. But then you start to look a little more closely. So a car this low couldn't have what Tesla would later turn into their skateboard battery architecture. So when they made this car, they basically put the batteries right behind the driver. And there's a little bit of a trunk back here I'll show you, but basically the weight of all these batteries stacks in the center of the car. And there's been several versions of this Roadster and actually some battery upgrades have happened to these since then. So owners have enjoyed larger and larger batteries over the years. This one, again, is ahead of its time. Uh, when it got its 3.0 battery upgrade, it was seeing about 350 miles of range on a full 100% charge. Now this version doesn't still get that because it's got, like I said, 97,000 miles on it, but it still gets around 250 miles on a full charge. Now let me, let me just show you what it's like to get into this thing. I don't know if there's any way to do this without looking a little bit awkward because it's so small but welcome to the inside of the, of the cabin and now we're in and as you can probably tell from the outside this is a very uh compact cabin you'll be getting very cozy with whoever your uh, passenger is but look tesla seats these are not original seats but there, there's a lot of tesla parts here here's the tesla steering wheel there's some speakers the little tiny door handle pulls up here these small side view mirrors and even, I mean, this is all probably very similar to the Elise, but one giant windshield wiper, these tiny little sun visors, all of the stuff in the car is so small. Now, maybe the, the opposite of being ahead of its time is this is, I mean, it's 2008, but this is the most analog electric car I have ever sat in. So to start it, you need the key and you actually take the key and put it in the ignition and turn it till you hear a sound. That sound means we're good to go. Then you can take it out of park and put it into drive, and then you can start to go. Now, the first thing you'll notice, 
is there is no power steering, so there's a lot of resistance at low speeds, but then you quickly get off to go. And then you're, once you're going, it's not really so bad. And man, it is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just put this back real quick so I can show you a couple more things. Oh, I do not recommend doing that with one hand. Then you can reverse. And you can see this tiny rear view camera here. Just a head unit installed just to be able to see behind you. So to park, you shift it into neutral and then apply the parking brake and you're good. And you can turn it off like a normal car. That's about the most analog thing you'll see in an electric car. But just looking around, this is very much sports car, which is no surprise. This huge carbon fiber sill and it says Tesla Motors on the outside here, and that's what you climb over to get in. And then just judging by the rest of the interior, like you have your HVAC controls down here, you've got a little bit of storage, not really a glove box, but you can put some CDs in here if you want, the head unit. And then there's this little screen over here. This little screen over here is again ahead of its time. So when the vehicle is on, this is basically the extent of software, basically, if you will. But this menu over here will basically show you everything you need to know about using and driving the car. Right now it's just showing you the overhead view and the time. It's 4 p.m. and you've got 51 miles left on this battery. Okay. But then when you disengage the parking brake, it flips over into this screen here that can show you a whole bunch of information. And you can swap between these. This is probably the best software in any EV of this time. It shows you your speed and your temperature outside and your battery percentage. It'll also show you a graph of your last five, 15, or 30 miles of driving, which is pretty sweet. And then you can keep going, shows you your trip, your odometer, your watt hours per mile, which by the way, for how much I've been driving it, this thing does not have the biggest battery in the world, but to consistently get this much range basically means it's a small light car and doesn't have to do a lot of work. So I'm going way under 300 watt hours per mile, which is sick. You keep going here, you have a live, or peak counter for your torque, horsepower, and the Gs that you're pulling. And it's actually very responsive while you're driving. You hit that pedal and you quickly see how many Gs you're pulling and how much horsepower it's using to do that. Then that's just your time. And then you get to your temperatures for battery and right back to the home screen. That's pretty sick. That's about as much information as I need on a screen in an EV. And I think one of the things about a lot of cars that are crazy high tech now is they've got all these huge screens everywhere. Low key, this lack of huge screens makes it feel a little bit more timeless. And then you actually get to the main reason why this car was so popular and interesting at the time, which is it's actually fun to drive. It reminds me of a lot of the older other Teslas and EVs I've driven, which is it has a very impressive quick off the line zero to 60. 3.7 seconds might not sound like a world beater right now, but it does it with quite a lot of noise and feel and when I say noise and feel, I mostly mean chassis, body, tire noise, and feeling every single bump as you go over it. Like this car is not designed to be comfortable, nor was the Lotus, so it isn't. So it is stiff, it is raw, you, you feel every little bump on the road, you can feel the paint lines on the road. I bet you could run over a dime and tell if it was heads up or tails. Um, but this is one of those things where like, it's a fun, piece to drive for a little while and then it kind of gets harsh and you wish you weren't sitting in really thin bucket seats and not even really thin or bucket but they are still pretty tough it makes all the other cars on the road seem huge it it's also kind of hard to see uh the lights when you're at the front of a line because the roof line is so low that you kind of have to duck your head a little bit to see out front which is not something you think about until you're in a car this size, but then it suddenly matters a lot. But really the point is, it's a sports car. So it, it looks like one, it feels like one, it drives like one, and it very much is one. There's your brakes, your sports tires, you've got these air intakes back here, and believe it or not, this is how you charge. And that's just gonna be a little bit of a light and popping it in. You'll need an adapter that is not a normal Tesla charger, but that's normally where the gas would go in the Lotus. Okay, let me show you the storage. Let me show you the storage situation. It's uh, it's respectable, okay? It's not the worst thing I've ever seen. This is how much storage you get in the back of an already converted gas car turned electric. Here's a bunch of computer. Here's a bunch of battery. 
high voltage, do not touch. But I mean, this is, this is solid. You've got your, you know, your brush, your ice scraper, your cables, charger, backpack, a pair of duffel bags, some luggage maybe. It's the whole back of the car essentially. That's, that's more than I've seen in some other EVs. Also, you know what else I found really interesting? This is just, I'm, I'm kind of rambling at this point, but other things that I found cool. This car has regen braking. Uh, not the strongest, but at low speeds, it is good enough for one pedal driving. So you can drive around and when you let your foot off the accelerator, the brake lights come on. So they'd already thought of that in the first version of this car. So yeah, just like as far as pure ahead of its time factor, there are so many things about this car that I've been really interested in and impressed by. Oh my God, that's the lowest car we've ever had here. Um, I like it a lot. Like it's basically a little bit of a peek behind the curtain into the, what made electric cars interesting over gas cars. Because there's now, it's there's a gas version of this car, the Lotus Elise, and the electric version. And the electric version was so interesting and quirky and compelling to get like real people to buy it. They only sold a couple thousand of them, maybe 3,000 total ever. Um, but the funny thing is a lot of them are still on the road today and some of them are actually up in value from when they first came out, which is, it's probably says something about Tesla, but also says something about the car itself. Dang, look at this dry carbon fiber here, right at the front. It's probably expensive. <laughs> a lot of this stuff might not be super impressive to people watching this now because it's a 2008 car and it seems like old news and it's pretty boring, but uh, I do appreciate the look into the past to appreciate the present we have now. That's that's super sick. Also, shout out to Justin. He's got a book publishing company and he wanted me to give them a shout out. And I'll gladly do that in exchange for the experience that I got uh, driving this car for a few days. It also got a lot of looks, Justin. I'm sure you're driving this thing around and people are pointing like, ah. a kid, a kid ran up to the car when I was parked and was like, how does anybody fit in that thing? <laughs> and I sat in the car like, yeah, how does anyone fit in this thing? <laughs> For the record, I don't. I, I really barely fit in it. Um, but there it is. That's the Tesla Roadster from 2008. My first impressions technically, but also, I don't know, just something super fascinating about observing what got us here today. So there it's been. Back to the new cars, of course, after this, but shout out to the OG. All right, thanks for watching. Catch you guys later. Peace.